San Diego Comic-Con 2022. We're talking the trending comics this week. Let's get into it. Another week, a different part of the country broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth with my homies, and we got the Golden Age Guru here. What's up, comic fam? We got the leader of the Gem Pyre, Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles. What's going on, everybody? Hit that like. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. We're here at San Diego Comic Con, trying to do the con, trying to do whatnot, and still delivering content for y'all. And considering we're at San Diego Comic-Con, you know the rumor mill has been going nuts, and the list reflects it at the list at number 10. Mr. Sinister's second appearance and first cover appearance in X-Men 239. Obviously a character that's extremely anticipated for us to want to see in the films, but we have a $25 average sale of that book generally. But we did see a $323 sale and a CGC 9.8 just in July. Now... This is the first appearance and mention of Madeline Pryor as Goblin Queen, not to be confused with Queen Goblin, obviously. We did see a 146% increase in copies sold this week versus the previous week after rumors that Javier Bardem has joined the MCU with speculations that he will portray Mr. Sinister. I think this would be excellent. This is a gentleman who has not only won Academy Awards, but is known for being able to portray a sinister villain. Sounds like a match made in heaven to me. And this is film before we have any kind of Disney announcements that are actually supposed to come tomorrow. Speculation is towards the mutants. We've been teased Mr. Sinister multiple times throughout X-Men movies, but never got the character. It's a shame that his first appearance in X-Men 221 doesn't share this cover because it's awesome when you have that first appearance with the character on the cover, this being a double key in that sense. And we have big moves for 221 as well. A regular CGC 9.8 direct market, we're seeing sales of $400. The newsstand edition, we're seeing sales in 1,000 and above. Do yourself a favor, comic fam, and download the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. Utilize code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription of the app. Get access to a wealth of funny book data. You know, fun name for comic books. Catalog your comic books. Get suggested pricing and keep up with this rapidly moving marketplace. Next at the list, at number nine, Black Adam number two, the one in 50 variant. This is new this week. It's a gorgeous cover. And we have a new Shazam or Black Adam to talk about. We have the White Adam. I actually just read this issue on the plane on the way over here. I like the reveal. We have this descendant of Black Adam. Spoiler alert, Black Adam dies. Dark Side killed him during this whole Dark Crisis event, and we have a successor. Rafael Sarmento killed this cover. It's a foil edition, and spoiler alert, we're not done talking about DC foils. First of all, the foil and the chrome love that I've been seeing at San Diego Comic-Con, it's like, what year is this? It's feeling like the 90s at the list at number eight. Catwoman 45, the one in 25 Sosa Mica variant hitting $85. And I've said this at least five different times this year. This is no surprise. Every single incentive variant that Sosa Micah does gets hot. We have been calling this from a mile away, but really we can't take credit for calling it because everybody who loves what Sosa Micah has been doing has been anticipating the releases and scooping them up at release. Yeah, I mean, KRS Comics, who's here at San Diego Comic-Con, shout out to KRSComics.com, put out killer exclusives, and we're seeing great foils because I don't know if it's paper quality or printing or what's happening, but they're far more outstanding than anything from the 90s in the quality. Mm -hmm. But again, a Sosa Mica book dropped here. Harley Quinn 16. So damn cool. Sold out in two days. 1,000 issues. A beautiful front cover. I think an even more stunning back cover. And Sosa again. Sosa, Sosa, Sosa. Give me as much Sosa as I can take. Well, you know, I'll tell you, we went to the KRS Comics booth. We were hunting for this. They did us a solid and pulled out a box for us to go through because some of them had some dings. Those, that foil is so prone to damages. Around the staples. Oh, man. How many did we have to go through to pull out nice copies for the comic fam? I think Tom went through every copy, and we were fortunate enough to get a small amount each, and we've been selling them on whatnot. It is now sold out. I might have to hold on to the remaining copies I have left. All right, next up the list at number seven, we have a very strange book because I could not find anyone who has it. I think a lot of people threw it out. Thor, Love and Thunder, number one, the classic cover collection. This was a promotional comic book given away at AMC theaters for those who attended the premiere July 15th, seeing $12 average sales. 
It being called a classic cover collection, I can only assume that on the inside, maybe there are some classic covers. Now, this is reminiscent to the Venom promo comic that they put out during the first Venom release. I was in New York, I think for Comic-Con around the time. I don't think you're going to see a lot of high-grade copies of this book. They give them to you at a movie theater. I think it might be polybagged, but you have to keep it in pristine condition throughout the whole movie, taking it home, hoping you even get a copy that doesn't have flaws. So I'd be on the lookout for high-grade copies of this. I'm with you. I have those Venoms still. And I'm a collector, and I was trying to be careful, and they, just, they, were, they were all like fines by the end of the movie. Yo, I'll give you a little bit of a tip, because we got some homies in Canada. The AMCs up there, when they get these comic books, well, they're a little different. They don't put the AMC logo on some of them. I know that's what happened with the Venom issue, so I'd be curious, any of our Canadian homies, if you got this Thor Love and Thunder book, does it have the AMC sticker, the, the logo on it? Because if it doesn't, and the American versions do, there is a scarcer variant of this wanted trending book. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show directly, if you want to give me an excuse to send you comic books every single month, well, we've teamed up with Peach, Momoko, and Whatnot Comics, so it's a great time to join the mystery mail call. The August box is in open enrollment. ComicTom101.com to join. Link in the description. One per box. We're sending out a Gambit number one written by Chris freaking Claremont. Back Crazy. Writing about Gambit, writing about Storm, like untold stories. And we teamed up with Peach Momoko. We have trade dresses and virgins going out at random. Join the community and Jem Hinnom with number six. You know what would be amazing Spider-Man 93? Not Silver Age. We're talking about modern Spider-Man and big moves for Ben Riley, who took over the book during the Beyond chapters, had his own miniseries. We're on the next lifespan of Ben Riley here as a new character. $8 average sales, an increase of copies sold of 167%. And we saw a rebirth as a villain, kind of some Joker vibes. The symbiote version of the Joker is what is seemingly being rolled out during the next Spider-Man phase. And we are going to get updates this weekend because we know Chasm, who this new villain is, is going to be a central and integral part of the Dark Web event that Marvel's going to be discussing at San Diego this weekend. I'm here for it. I'm a Ben Riley fan. I'm a Clone Saga fan. Again, I grew up in the 90s. You're such a 90s kid. You love Spidey 2099. I can't help it. It's my, my nostalgia. Doom's going to come in and you're like, yeah, man, I'm just waiting for Doom 2099. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if this will be a long-term character. You know, it reminds me of stuff that we've seen when one character becomes another character. It doesn't always stick, so... I would be on the lookout for it, maybe not get too crazy. It's still exciting and cool times to be a Spider-Man fan. You know, it's also a really damn cool time to be a mutant fan at the list at number five, Frank Miller goodness. I mean, this is where it all started, man. Wolverine in his first miniseries, issue number one debuting in 1982, one of my all-time favorite covers, $200 average sales. We're seeing a 9.8 sell for $721 this month and a new stand hit 1475 and i still to this day think both of those numbers are low those are down from it, their heights in 2021 but it's all because of the mutants we've already talked about it this video members are anxiously awaiting any type of update any news to break this weekend yeah you know if this is going to be a hot book that wolverine number one the 1988 series which to be honest i actually like that cover better and for me, that book is more important, uh, even though, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a newer book out of the 1982 Frank Miller, and everybody loves Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. But love this book, too. Keep an eye out for it. It's underrated, man. $400 for a 9.8? Yeah, we saw a lot of fire with this book around the same time as the Limited Wolverine, so don't be shocked if you see both those books starting to skyrocket. And the newsstand has been going crazy on the first ongoing series as well. We're looking at $870 sales for a CGC 9.8 newsstand. That's right, and I own a copy of a new Senate 98, and I think I paid right around eight to nine hundred dollars. So this right here is a book, in my opinion, that is going to break a thousand dollars. The first sign of Wolverine, Logan, any updates? We may just get animation updates. You know, they're bringing back that OG series, but with the Ms. Marvel reveal that took place in the finale, we know that she has the mutant gene. 
We are going to be seeing mutants very soon. And with Gambit on the list last week, it's a matter of time that we're going to see Wolverine, Keith, Spike when members can't afford 181, 180. Hell, they're going to be searching for 182 before they get giant size or Wolverine 1, the solo or the first ongoing. Pretty soon we're going to be talking about freaking long shot here. Look, I need, I need to take a second here and I got to talk to Feige. I know you're watching this, Kev. I know. All right. Give us mutants. We need a boost, and that boost comes in a mutant form. He's just saying that because you have how many copies of Hulk 181? <laughs> oh, I do have a lot of copies, but I want mutants. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. We know they're coming. We're getting closer and closer. We got the Miss Marvel reveal. We've got Professor X in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We already have mutants in the MCU, but now it's just official. We can say they have the mutant gene, which is what we got with Miss Marvel. So... Let's get some Gambit, some Wolverine love. Let's get into the mutant shows. I have to know from the community about number four on the list. Thor, Love and Thunder. Gore, the God Butcher. We've been saying so many times, he's going to kill gods, he's going to kill gods. And he did kill a lot of gods. And there were so many more gods in that film than I was anticipating. But... Is it a consensus that we all assume that not only would we likely see Hercules and we knew we we're going to see Zeus, right. but that Gore would kill at least one of them and he didn't at the list at number four, Avengers 38, debuting in 1967. It's great seeing this old, like just classic Avengers books getting love. This book never sold back in the day and now it's hitting $65 average sales. A 9.6 off white pager hit $1,045 this week. I just want to say, that's the part I like about speculation. This book is getting much more love than it ever would have received, you know, because of this movie. And yeah, even though somehow they came away unscathed after Thor Love and Thunder, Hercules was more of a teaser towards the end that we're going to get more of in the future. So I would prepare to see a lot more Hercules covers and big events on these lists in these weeks to come. And this is a pretty striking cover. You've got a bold red background from what I remember, a large image of Hercules. So it's coming, seeing something from the Silver Age and a 9.6 and only hit the $1,000 mark. I say only because if you really think about how expensive tough, comics man. are, you can see how affordable Silver Age Avengers is can be right the first meeting of hercules and the avengers we also have the first battle of hercules and Ares, and an increase of copies sold of 333 percent spoiler alert hercules shows up in the post credit scene at the list at number three Ugh, just waiting we're waiting we're crossing our fingers crossing our toes are we gonna get updates on mutants this weekend are we gonna get updates on Deadpool at the list at number three. Deadpool, the circle chase number one, debuting in 1993. $15 average sales, $145 for a CGC 9.8. That's this month. Collectors are hoping that we're going to get updates on Deadpool 3 this weekend, but possibly D23. I'll remind the community that although we're going to get Hall H breaking news, and it's been a few years, right? It's like since the last, or at least, yeah, this is like three years now since Hall H was like, Bang, and you know Disney, Marvel, they're going to be bringing the heat, but they only got an hour. They only have an hour, comic fam, so it can't possibly hit all of these rumors. But D23 is around the corner. We, will we get Deadpool news? It's possible, but this increase of 122% is reflecting that. And I always thought that this is an underrated book. Yeah, this is another one of those next best thing type of books. The first appearance in New Mutants 98, getting crazy again. This is the first solo limited series for Deadpool. And this is a book I'd probably rather have. I mean, it's a, it's a classic black cover for kind of Deadpool. I think it's also embossed, so the letters stick out. Right. Uh, but then you also have X-Force 2, which is the second appearance. Will we start seeing increases in that book? I don't know. I think I'd rather have this first solo over that X-Force 2 because it's such a plentiful book. I think I have the one that's going to beat both of those comics you just named. X-Force 1 polybagged with the Deadpool rookie card. Is that the actual official second appearance? It's been it's been a joke between the team. We argue about it, comic fam. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you do, oh, we got a giveaway for him. We got a freaking banger giveaway. We are at the biggest comic book convention in the world. So we have to do a crazy giveaway. What not publishing exiled the ash can Wesley Snipes Ooh. signed by the creative team. We have to give a big thank you to what not publishing. And we got to give a big thank you to the creators who signed this and made it possible. I'm with Tom in the con. I turn around for two seconds. I turn back. He's interviewing the creators of this book impromptu. It was awesome. They were so kind to sign this book and give it away to y'all. 
Shout out to Adam Larson and Keith RM. You guys made a dope comic book with Wesley Snipes. And the Kickstarter for the first release ends this weekend. I'll put the link in the description who wants to back this brand new comic. And comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video. What do you think about Deadpool, that rookie card, the second appearance? It'll enter you to win this SDCC exclusive next at the list at number two. Ooh, Tomb of Dracula number one. Neil Adams goodness debuting in 1972. One of my favorite covers of all time. I know you love this book. You had to give it away for the greater good, and I totally get that. This book is on fire because of the rumors that Anthony Starr Getting scared. <laughs> could possibly play Dracula in this movie. Now, I'm already scared to death of Anthony Starr from Homelander. I don't want to see Dracula. He'll not haunt my nightmares for years. Well, I can tell you one thing. The guru loves this book, too. How many damn Tomb of Dracula ones do you have currently right now? And how many do you have at 9.8? Because there are under 15 in existence. Yeesh. Oh, God. Well, let's just say I've been kind of the reason that there's so many 9.8s in existence. <laughs> <laughs> I am hoarding them. I have five 9.8s. Jeez. Ooh. And this book has been going up. That's Hopefully right. future 9.9. I bought one of your nine eights, so that means that if you had kept all of yours, you'd be at like six or seven, which is near half the damn census. Comic fam, I traded my nine eight white pager for a Journey 83 3.0 white pager. Shout out to Red Hood Comics. Yo, Rob, we love you, my brother. Enjoy that book, but... We're chatting about average sales hitting $450. An 8.5 this past month sold for $909. And the 9.8s, although have reached highs of over 13,000, we saw two different sales. One of them, a white pager sell for under 12. Yeah, uh, it's one of those interesting books right now because we saw a 9.6 just sell two for 2,400. I was just looking at it. I have a 9.6 white pager at the con I'm trying to sell that had previous sales of around 3,500. So whoever got that book, I believe got a, a screaming deal. And I do think this personal 9.6, I've had a lot of inquiries, is going to sell close to four to 3,500. 9.8, if you can get that, let's say for 10K, I think it's a great investment at the moment. All right, we have an increase of copies sold of 143%. Tomb of Dracula 1. I mean, the introduction of Dracula, we know the occult, the supernatural, it's inbound, a Halloween special, Jack Russell in the horizon. Oh, Blade, we have to see some of the supernatural injected into the MCU. I am so hyped to see the blood. Hit the like. Slap the subscribe button. We're here for the comic fam every single week, whether we're at a convention or not. And the most trending book prior to news breaking at San Diego Comic-Con 2022, we back comic fam, is World War Hulk. Issue number one. Ooh, this book is getting hot again. $15 average sales and a high sale of $250 for a 9.8. Yeah, we saw the book creep from under 200 to 200, now 250. And big shout out to our good friend Michael Roman at Everything Always who broke this rumor. Let me read you the quote, all right? You got to take this with a grain of salt, of course. But he said it was originally going to be a movie, but is now being turned into a four-part Disney Plus series. Maybe a small theatrical release could be the big event before Secret Wars. We know Secret Wars are coming. We know incursions are coming. And you might say, how can you have World War Hulk without Planet Hulk? The consensus is basically that Thor Ragnarok was a loose adaptation of Planet Hulk. Probably this announcement, if it's true, will be in name only. And considering Namor is on the path right now for the screen, it sounds like negotiations may have happened for Hulk, which is why we haven't gotten Hulk movies. Yeah, it seems like whatever type of rights issues that Marvel or Disney may have had with Universal may have been ironed out, and we may get more Hulk story. And we might get the Hulk that we freaking want. I want the Hulk that smashes. I don't want the Hulk that, you know, teaches in a lab. That's right. We have an increase of copies sold in 614%. We have multiple variants of this issue. The one in 25 by John Romita Jr. There's a second printing. There's even a David Finch and a Diamond Comics distributors exclusive. But my personal favorite is the Michael Turner variant limited to 5,000 copies. We appreciate your time today, comic fam. As always. Geek responsibly. And stay minty fresh. Peace.